today I am exhausted uh, again I didn't get a whole lot of sleep last night and tonight or today rather I was trying to get the uh, the green Civic that was in my front driveway uh, cut up and unfortunately we got started we have a convertible sled with half of an engine bay but it started to rain and we were outside uncovered uh, with electrical tools and rain just doesn't mix well with those things so uh, unfortunately we had to stop which I'm sure my neighbor is not gonna be too happy about tomorrow but if it's not raining tomorrow I'm gonna go back to cutting um, so Hopefully it won't bother uh, them too much, but <clears throat> I, was, uh, I was a little disappointed. We um, hit a couple of snags uh, as far as one of my Sawzalls actually broke, um, and we had a battery backup, but the battery just doesn't last on it. Too expensive to buy a new battery, so we had to actually go out and buy another Sawzall. Uh, which which kind of sucks. I mean, that's that's not really an expected cost, but um, You know it is what it is. I, I mean stuff happens and you just kind of have to roll with it But I was uh, I was filming and I'm going to continue filming tomorrow uh, so it is my objective to bring you guys a uh, time-lapse of the car just being chopped into smaller and smaller pieces um, until it eventually disappears uh, from sight. And I'm gonna make that happen. I mean, it has to happen, um, but um, it was, uh, it, it's, it's fun. This is not my first time chopping up a car. Um, I was doing really well when I had a long carbide um, a carbide tipped uh, saw blade that was meant for uh, fast steel and I'm probably I, I'm debating about going and buying another one because I unfortunately broke that with my Sawzall um, and I, I think that it just make the I mean just the, as far as the engine bay is concerned getting through the engine bay really really does need a longer saw blade it needs the one foot blade um, the nine inch blade just isn't really long enough because uh, there's a lot of square tubing that you have to make it through and um, that nine inch blade just doesn't it, it isn't long enough <laughs> um, once the engine bay is done and the firewall is done there's not a whole lot left I, I mean everything else is uh, everything else goes real quick, but, um, the dashboard firewall area, um, that's a bit of a difficult, uh, stretch. And then really the only other semi difficult or hazardous, uh, place is the fuel tank, but that's four bolts and a couple of hoses and that will come out. So, uh, that won't even really be an issue. I'm actually kind of hoping for the first time ever that some neighborhood punk has come by and siphoned that fuel tank. Um, but, I mean, we'll see. I mean, even if they haven't, um, I'll, I'll put a hole in it or something um, and pour it off into another can and maybe use it to start a fire. Um, so, that's, uh, that's really what's going on right now. Um, I paid for the materials to actually start the repairs on the house today. Um, I got a new dishwasher installed. That was pretty cool. I should have filmed that, but I had no idea what I was doing with the dishwasher. I, 
That's not really true. I knew, I knew, I know the basics of electrical, um, of home electrical. I haven't dabbled in a whole lot of home electrical, so it was um, a little bit of a, a little bit of a stretch of what I've already known. Um, and then same with plumbing. Um, I've done like I, I've fixed uh, broken pipes before. Um, but I haven't really done a dishwasher before. I didn't really have a whole lot of experience uh, in doing any of this, but I was pretty confident that I could do what I needed to do to get the dishwasher installed. And I was successful in getting the dishwasher installed. So now all of the appliances in the kitchen all look the same. Um, I think the only thing left that we're not gonna really change out is we're gonna pull the uh, vented hood uh, over the stove down and we're gonna sand that down and paint that black a nice black to match the black accents off of the stove uh, so that it looks like it belongs there instead of a, a crappy done white um, vented hood it'll kind of th make things look a whole lot nicer and that can I mean even that can be done really really cheap um, it's not it's not gonna look cheap but it, it doesn't have to cost a whole lot of money and that's really what I'm up to I, I, it's just uh, small little things here and there that really individually they can't cost a whole lot to complete and they don't even really mean a whole lot individually but all of these small things add up to a serious drop in price. Like I'm looking right now, there's a small gap between some floorboards in the living room. And that's one of the things that we're actually going to um, pull up a section of the floor. Uh, and it's right in front of one of the doorways to one of the bedrooms. Luckily, it's not like in the middle of the floor somewhere. Um, it's like two boards off of the bedroom. Uh, or off of the uh, bedroom door where the floors actually meet. So that's going to be something that um, <clears throat> we'll be able to kind of get in there and um, fix that gap, close it back up, uh, and uh, put everything back into place and not really have a whole lot of problems. But, you know, that gap in the flooring, that might be... Uh, you know, and I, I hate to put it, I hate to even try to put a dollar value to it, but for the sake of the example, that might be um, a $500 price drop in the, in the cost of the house. Uh, when I, as far as the, as far as a potential buyer is concerned. And if there's a bunch of those little things like that, it adds up to a much bigger price drop because during the negotiation process, a potential buyer is going to say, well, I'm going to have to invest X amount of money into it to make small repairs. And so they're going to use that as a means to drop the price that they actually pay me. So in an effort to get more money, and I'm not trying to be greedy. I know it, I know it sounds like it, um, but <clears throat> um, all of the money that I get for the house is going towards school and over and above what I what I still owe on the house. So if I get more money, it's a longer period of time that I can stay in Japan without having to actually work work um, and I can still focus on school. So, I mean, these little $500 repair things, they're, they're only going to cost me like um, that's uh, basically a trim plate. I need to get a trim plate or a gapping plate between uh, the hardwood and uh, the carpet. And having that little plate put in, uh, or basically having the current plate pulled up, uh, having the floor fixed and closing it back up is going to cost me less than $5. But in the example, it's going to be a $500 repair that could knock the price of the house down. So, um, and again, there's a bunch of stupid little silly stuff like that. Um, some of the doors don't have door stoppers on them. Luckily, I don't have any holes in the drywall because that would really suck. But <clears throat> all those little things add up to a big price drop. And that's what I'm hoping to avoid is a big price drop 
uh, because what I'm asking for the house is, is a lot and it's worth it for the houses in the area. But the point is I have to make this house worth it too. And that's what's, uh, that's the big objective. Unfortunately, I did not get the car uh, chopped up today. I was hoping that I could release a time-lapse video to you guys of the, of the car just kind of disintegrating. Uh, but that didn't happen. And unfortunately, you guys are going to have to wait until tomorrow for that video because I do have to get that car chopped up. And I am running out of time for that. As far as the fun car is concerned, I checked the water level again today. The water level has not moved. And I have been really, really progressively more and more abusive to that car. And it's not gotten any worse. So um, I'm going to stop going out of my way to be abusive to the car. Um, <clears throat> Because I certainly don't want to create a, ser a scenario where it's now causing problems. But the thing is, is that this car is going to have to go to on a drive to Florida and then from Florida to Colorado. And it's not just like northern Florida. It has to go all the way to Miami, the bottom southernmost tip of Florida. Uh, so we're, I, I mean, I'm looking at a 10 hour... 10 or 11 hour drive from where I'm at right now uh, down to uh, Miami and then um, it's 15 hours from uh, where I live now to um, Colorado Springs which is where I'm going to go and so that is uh, that is a decent trek uh, it's uh, you know it's it won't be done all in one go but it's 46 hours, 47 hours of driving, uh, continuous, and that could be a little rough on the car. So I would rather it break down now while I still have the house and all the tools and everything that I need uh, to make any kind of repairs that I'm going to need right here. So that's why I've been really abusive on it. That's why I've been trying to break it uh, now rather than later. Uh, it would suck to get down to my dad's house and have the car break down. That would be pretty catastrophic for me, and uh, it would it would put a little bit it would put a pretty big burden on my dad. So I want to avoid that. Um, the car is getting older, and I have to take that into account. Um, the suspension is a lot stiffer now. I have to take that into account. The engine mounts need to be replaced, and I'm going to try to have those replaced before I take off for Florida, um, because that's, I mean, that's something that's pretty simple and easy to replace, um, I, except for the bottom rear one. Um, that one's a little bit of a pain, but I'll, I'll make something happen as far as that's concerned. Um, but... <clears throat> The, I mean, the motor mounts are just going to have to be replaced. And I think while I'm in Colorado, I'll probably convert them to solid mounts. Uh, unless I happen to find a good set of solid mounts while I'm here or am somehow able to make them. Um, then I'll go ahead and convert the engine to solid mounts. But it, it's um, there's only a little bit of work left on the fun car. Um, I've got coolant flush in there right now uh, which means I've got a wa uh, I've got a water system uh, with just some flush in it uh, no no uh, antifreeze is in there at all and that's gonna have to come out especially before I get to Colorado because I'll be in Colorado during the winter months and the temperatures just plummet there so I'm going to have to get uh, the antifreeze back in, which that's going to happen in like a week or something like that. Um, I need to uh, get the, I need to take it out on a real long drive and I need to have the thermostat back in it before I can actually really flush out um, the rest of the coolant or the rest of the water that's in the system uh, because the thermostat being out does not allow the car to reach proper operating temperature. And I can't really maintain a solid uh, 180 degree water temperature with there not being a thermostat in there to help regulate that. And uh, so the thermostat's going to have to go back in 
so that I can actually finish the flush job. And depending on how far I get on chopping up the other Civic, I'll probably put the thermostat back in tomorrow uh, or put the new thermostat in tomorrow. Um, and hopefully that'll, uh, uh, that well, it, it, it's not a hopefully. I'll be able to go ahead and top off the water that's in the system right now and then uh, be able to run the car. I'm thinking maybe a um, just a couple hour trip around Nashville uh, will probably do it for me. Uh, there is one wire that needs to be fixed going into the ECU and that'll be taken care of um, possibly tomorrow as well. I mean, we'll see how uh, we'll see how chopping up the Civic goes. Um, <clears throat> but other than that, I mean, there's not, uh, not too much more is going on around the house right now. Uh, once these repairs are done, uh, to the house and to the cars, uh, or to the car, uh, I'll be done. I'll be done, done. I'll be waiting for the house to literally sell. And that is probably not going to take a whole lot of time in the market that is going on here in Murfreesboro right now. So, um, it is a good year to be a seller and I'm going to try to capitalize on that as much as possible. But this has been, uh, this has definitely been an adventure and I'm excited about it. And the adventure is only going to get more crazy and more insane. So I hope you guys will continue to, uh, support me in that endeavor. Speaking of which, if you are liking my videos, um, which I haven't really been bringing you guys more than live streams lately, but I've been trying to at least bring you guys something. Um, but if you guys like the videos, please like and subscribe. Uh, it really goes a long way to help me out. And I look forward to seeing you guys hopefully tomorrow. Bye. Please help